Hi, welcome to Colours, City of Liverpool online radio station here at the University of Hope, well, Hope University, sorry, at the Creative Campus on Shore Street. And we're in this wonderful, amazing radio room that they've created uh, to do shows like this. So, yeah. So I'm joined today by a really wonderful man who's done a lot for football. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to interviewing. So his name is Mr. Howard Gale. So, Howard, welcome to Colours. Thank you. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot about you over the years across the city. So anyway, people watching on the socials or are not into football or maybe are into football, tell people who, who you know, you and, and how you got into football and what it means for you. Yeah. Well, we're within the, the, the centre of the world, which is Liverpool, which is, is um, it's well documented that boxes football teams and um, like every other child growing up, I had the aspirations of, of being able to play for one of them on, on my team was Liverpool. Um, wow. And as I say, the, the, the normal complexion of it was, was an impossibility because there wasn't any black players in the club, never mind playing in the first team. And um, when I got there in 77, um, there was only one of the black or two other black players in the in the in the youth team, but they didn't get as far as I did. So um, it was it was more of a um, of realising a dream for me, um, and it would have been for any any kid growing up on the streets of Liverpool. Um, pathway, wow. Pathways for work and education and stuff like that again was was something again that. We struggled with us black people in, in, in the city. Wow. Um, a lot of people were leaving the city um, to go and find work. Um, Liverpool in itself had a had this um, redundancy where it was, it was known as the, um, the the oldest black community in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah. The highest unemployment in Europe. So growing up here again, as I say, the the, the future didn't look bright, and um, being able to dodge the future or the, <laughs> the, the workforce being able to play football again I was able to achieve that. Can I dig deeper? Because me growing up in the 60s as well, you know, I faced a lot of adversities, you know, racism and everything else, you know, the sus law we were just talking about and everything else. In terms of you trying to make it as a footballer, as a young lad, what adversities did you face? Um, everything again from uh, a lot of the the, um, the angelic racism that you see that's aimed at professional football as well. That was every week for me. Um, wow. Playing junior football. Um, I was the only I was only black in, in my team. So again I, I received a lot of direct abuse but also physical abuse. People were trying to kick me while I was playing football because I was I was good. I knew I was good. And I had to be good. I know, but who? So who were your mentors? Because there were no other mentors before you, I, I would assume. So who was mentoring you, mentoring you as a black young man, and and allowing your or, or giving you the thing to continue and get through these things? How was it all, all self, self? No, again, as I say, I got a lot of support by me, me two older brothers, um, ah. Alan and um, Abdul, and my sister Janice. Um, we were. We were born, well I was born in Toxteth, yeah, and yeah. within three months we'd moved up um, to uh, a white area on the outskirts of the city called Norris Green, yeah. and that's where I was, I was brought up, um, and I faced a lot of difficulties on a daily basis um, going into school, because everybody wanted to fight the nigger. Wow. And I, I went through the, the early periods of school fighting virtually every night and I was going home with me, me clothes all ragged and so on and yeah. my mum was going mad and I couldn't tell my mum yeah. what was going on because again as I say these are kind of like things that you, you didn't want to bother you, 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 yeah. your mum with and me dad yeah. so do the round to it where it was well stay in yeah. and that's how we dad dealt with, don't go out. Resonations, I've got similar because I grew up in London, but I, I'm sure there were similarities of growing up in schools yeah. and what was going on. 
Yeah. So a bit di digging a bit deeper as well, um, as you became a footballer, what what was that turning point where you knew or how you knew you were gonna get into you know like I know you played for Liverpool. What what how did you manage that? What was the the key things that that made you or got you there? Well, I was on a I was on a um, some would say a, a, a path of destruction. Um, <laughs> mm. Six months before. Um, I think I was, I was no in fact it was 18 months before I signed for Liverpool I got sent to a detention centre because of how I was I was on the, the streets again the streets were, were binding and it was a way of, of survival um, we touched on before again to say about the the, um, the process of work and yeah. the unavailability of work for the blacks in the city so I had to go down the road of crime to to kind of like earn a living and then yeah. I went too far one day and then I ended up getting a um, four months detention centre and uh, they called it the, the short sharp shock. shock yeah <laughs> um, and uh, coming out again is to say things didn't change I didn't look within the, the prison sentence and say, well, I'm going to be good, I'm going to change my life when I go out there again. That, was, that wasn't an option for me. I, I struggled finding work. Yeah. So the only option for me was the street. Yeah. was criminality. So I knew that I was going to be going back to that um, at some wow. stage. But in between that, um, I started playing football for my brother's team, um, the timepiece and the Bedford. On the Sunday, yeah, I've heard so about that. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and um, I never ever envisaged that I would end up at, in in the Liverpool camp. You d I, so this wasn't a dream that you were aspiring to. Yeah, it was. It, it was always a dream. I went to bed every night dreaming <laughs> it, but I never like, those sorts of dreams again. That's what you did. You dreamed about them because it never became reality. And I, I was of a mindset because again. I looked at the the the, um, the circle around me. There was no black players yeah. in Liverpool. There was only one black player who played for sorry two black players for, for Everton. One was called Mike Trebleco. Yeah. And people didn't know about him being black because he was mixed race and there was no colour pictures. So on the, on oh. the colour pictures on the white people again he looked he looked white. But Cliffy Marshall um, yeah. When I was playing for um, the school, our school had um, two players who played for England schoolboys and Cliffy played for them as well. So when we were going down to Wembley and Bramall Lane to go and watch England, um, Cliffy was the only black player playing for England. Then he went to play for Ever Everton. Um, here in the city what we used to do is we'd go and watch Liverpool one week, Everton the next yeah. week. Um, I thought again it would have been a, a great place to be, seeing somebody black on, on, on the yeah, pitch. Of but standing on the terraces at Goodison Park, all the Everton fans were monkey chatting. Oh dear. And I, I heard, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking, how can your own supporters be doing that to you? I expect you to, mm -hmm. to play. And um, he was called kind of like a, 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 a role model for me because, again, yeah. he. he he, I think he, he eventually again, he, and you're all going to succumb to that um, when your own fans are, uh, are doing yeah. that. I mean, you think, oh, well, well, why am I doing this? And then um, Cliffy, I think Cliffy left Everton and went to um, to Bain. Because of the yeah, well, because of the obviously the, the the lack of opportunities. Because again, as I say, the the coaching staff and the manager, I think, didn't get it. And. I think they expected him to be somebody who was a, a live wire who was having to, ah, to, yeah. to go through all of this down and just pick it up and carry on and it depresses you in the end. Of course it does. Now you've been through this whole journey since the 60s. So this question I think is quite poignant in terms of you've watched the journey, especially black players over the last 30, 40, 50 years. Have you, uh, what, what do you think and how do you feel about the 
the journey of that place and the football club, do you think we're in a good place now? Do you think, uh, you know, from what your knowledge of what you've been seen and what you've been through, what do you feel where football is now, especially for diversity and stuff? Mm. There's two ways of, of looking at this because, again, back in the day, you're thinking that they were trying to stop the progress of black players mm -hmm. because it was just an element of racism. Yes. But now, when I look at it, it's about ability. And uh, we're born with, we're blessed with pace and power and agility. We're yeah. born with that. Yeah. And <laughs> now, again, as you see, you see that most of the, the, the best players now in the world are black. Yeah, evidently. Pelé, Pelé, Pelé. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> no, there are many, and, many more. And you say go again, and say they, yeah. they were the two icons um, Back in the day, of, yeah. of, of black footballers. But there is now become, becoming a change. Um, I remember um, watching Clyde Best um, on Match of the Day playing for West Ham, and he was getting the same booze off the West Ham fans yeah. as what Cliff Marshall was getting. At, <laughs> at, at Everton, um, I, I was thinking to myself, and I, um, and I said to my dad, watching watching the game, dad, I said, why are they doing that to him, dad? They're his own fan. He said, you learn in the future. Then that's that's a key thing you do. Yeah. So, what did what are the most uh, nicest things, memories you have of? With your journey being a, a footballer and a black footballer as well over, over the years, what 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 did you get out of it, Howard? What well, was the, well the, the the good points far outweigh the bad points. Yeah, I hope I hope um, so. Being able to play for Liverpool is, as I say, it's a, it's being able to realise the dream. Every kid in this city wants to play for Liverpool or Everton. Yeah, they play football, and I was able to to achieve that, and. I had a handicap of being black. Well, I guess sorry, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Again. Yeah. So being black so is not, hand not a handicap no. for me. But in the eyes of the um, the establishment at the time, yes, yeah, I would. I would I thought that's how they would have looked down on me. And um, breaking through football at an iconic club like Liverpool, yes. which was just about to become a juggernaut, then. The, um, the realisation of that and, and the fact that I did do it is again is a, is a, a real achievement. Um, for I've got to give you a round of applause for that, what you've achieved. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, sorry, so people probably want to know, you know, you're, you're about 60... 60 66 in a couple of months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. People probably want to know what is your journey now? What what, what are you doing now, Howard, you know, in terms of... Um, well, again, when, when I... Pardon me, I retired from football. I always ask this question of why, again, because again, I was while playing football, I was labelled, I got a label of being the first black player to play for the pool football club. Yeah, and um, I always ask the question that now I broke through and I've showed everybody the talent that we have within the city. Why is nobody else following me? And um, with with Every club that I went to, with it being um, Birmingham City, Sunderland, Liverpool, and Blackburn Rovers, wow. I always took my friends there, got them trials at these clubs to try and help them up the yeah. And I was disappointed again why, why, why Liverpool didn't see well. The there's, there's a, a, mm. a gem or a diamond that or a rough diamond that we've just found, and there's loads of them in the, in the, in the city. And they're just waiting for, for their chance, but as I say, it didn't come. And even to this day, there aren't um, many blacks who've made it out of Liverpool eight into Liverpool or whatever since first. Yeah. So, what 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 is the change you would like to, if there's any change that you think is lacking in terms of Liverpool and supporting? Well, it's, it, it's it's realistic representation, and I'm and I'm. Years ago, when we were talking about this, and when we, when we started the debate and, and, and analysing it, it was mainly about about football players, and football clubs are a huge industry. So again, you're looking at the, the administrative staff, the coaching staff, the, 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 the elements again around equality, and people look at it as, as well, look, we've got half our teams black on the pitch. 
They were really well overlevable. It's not. It's not. There has to be the full purpose, and that diaspora has to be on a, on a level right through the to the club. Then a club can say that. Love that. We're not. We're we're not racist. We're not bananas. That you've got equal opportunities. You've got policies that you follow, and those policies are the same for everybody. I, I, why, I, why are you not an ambassador going into special? I mean, maybe you are. Uh, going into schools where there are a lot of black kids aspiring to be footballers or is it something that you're doing or? Um, I've, 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 I've did it for many years again as I say when I, when I retired from football yes. and, I, and I asked myself that question um, about black players breaking into football yeah. and, and what I did as I set up football teams but I showed my, my, my players to clubs outside of the city because uh -huh. I didn't think that the, the two clubs here we're ready for them. So again, as I say, that was that was my policy. Again, we go and play games against clubs like Exeter and Plymouth and um, Wrexham, and you know what I mean, to, to showcase them. And um, the players themselves, again, even then, like today, they'll come up to me and say thank you. You know what I mean? That they were brilliant times for us because um, we we tried to. Um, we tried to copy everything that happened in a, in a football club. So pre-season, we'd go to a, a place in Wales called Colomendi. I know Colomendi, yes, yeah, it's a way. That would, be, that would be our training camp for the pre-season. We'd take all the kids away, and the parents would come, come up <laughs> on a Sunday, and see if the kids were all right, and then go back to Liverpool. But that was our camp. Um, and we tried to emulate, because again, people were saying that, Oh, when they get into the football clubs, they're not ready for it. So we we try to mimic all the things or give them all the skills that they were going to need when they went into the football clubs. Um, one lad went to Exeter, uh, Les Apple, done really, really well. And again, as I say, he, he was equal to play at the top level. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I, I could speak to you all day, day hard, but I know <laughs> we're going to wind down soon. But you know what, in terms of people who are going to be watching this, you know, community groups, uh, and people wanting to maybe you know uh, ask you to maybe come in and and do some workshops or support young and upcoming footballers. Is, is that something that they can contact you? On? Yeah, yeah. Again, as I say, my work is with young people. It's always has been since I retired from football. Again, I was working with young people, um, changing their um, their aspirations because again, as I say, most of their aspirations from 14 upwards would have been criminal. Yeah, of course. So we were trying to show them something different, different. And guide them somewhere different. Because again, as I say, they, they, um, they didn't see the other side of the criminality, which is prison. And being away from home. And in some cases, again, you're getting kids who are doing something which is not relevant, which is stupid. And getting six, seven years for it. And then six and seven years, you don't get them back. So yeah. it's trying to make them see what prisons like, what a cell's like, what the company's going to be like, to how it's going to impact them. I like but, that. But show, them, <laughs> but show them something positive again through our football programs. Do you know what, I've been, mean, people watching, as I said before, an amazing journey that, uh, you know, Mr. Howard Gare has been on, and it's a testament to, you know, the, the struggles that we go through, but he made it through and played for Liverpool. And I think, you know, if you want to, uh, so how do people, if they want to get in touch with you, Howard, is there like a, a, a website or an email or how can people contact you? Yeah, well, there's, 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 a, there's an email and it's um, just, just... If you give it to me at the end, I'll, I'll post it on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Uh, how to contact Howard Gale if you want to engage with him in your schools or maybe a community group. How can I shake that wonderful hand of yours? It's been an absolute pleasure yes, having you, Thank you on City of Liverpool online radio station. Stay tuned for some more wonderful uh, conversations. Ciao. Cuff, 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 cuff